welcome to Crypto Mastery. I'm Susie, and we've got Joe on the line, the creator of the Crypto Mastery Indicators. So today we're going to make crypto easy to understand, simple to invest in. We'll look at some news, overall market, hot movers in the basket, and most importantly, the indicators and question and answers. So Binance added Ripple to its dual investment products and Ripple price surging. This was on the CryptoNews.com. So there's now a dual product APR varies from 4% to 179%. Wow. So Ripple, the price increased more than 5.64% in 24 hours. The dual investment products lets users buy or sell cryptocurrency at a future date and price of their choice without paying any fees. Very nice. Ripple's current price move the court's success on the SEC versus Ripple was the main fuel for the Ripple's remarkable 55% increase. Furthermore, the Ripple price has rallied over 42% in the past month. On another article, I found that Ripple versus SEC case, the never ending battle. Now, this wasn't recent, but I did like the takeaway from this. So, Ripple is called the banker token. I wanted you guys to know what Ripple is and why it's such an essential piece of technology um, because it's been illustrated as an alternative for the SWIFT. SWIFT is what bankers use to transfer money globally and it is very monitored. Um, it's a very powerful technology to be replacing. Ripple is widely accepted in many countries as an easier tool for cross-border transactions. Unfortunately, this makes Ripple a centralized asset that will be overseen by an organization. So the other article I wanted you to see, just to kind of bring it all together. Oh, I apologize for this slide. It's a little funky. Ripple's latest win means for its ongoing fight with the SEC by Daniel on Coindesk. So on October 29th, a U.S. District Court judge ruled to release emails and other correspondence written by former SEC Corporation Finance. Give me one second, guys. I apologize for doing this. I just need to delete this. So this slide is better. All right, here we go. Okay, so that's better. We're doing this on YouTube, so that will have to be edited. All right. So the judge ruled the release of emails and other correspondence from the SEC Corporation Division Director William Hinman. It relates to a speech where he said that Ethereum, Ether, was not a security because, like Bitcoin, it was sufficiently decentralized. So they're having to go back in history to somewhat justify the current condition, saying that they are not a security. These communications are cornerstone of Ripple's legal strategy in case that is nearing the two-year mark. They've been going at it for two years, you guys. Instead of settling with the agency, Ripple seeks to prove the SEC has taken an unclear, contradictory, and arbitrary approach to regulating crypto. If it's successful, the case could set an important precedent for the crypto industry. So all in all, guys, this is a very, very serious litigation or scenario that is going to really impact crypto and the whole financial system because of the technological access that this or the the service that ripple is actually serving human humanity it, it's going to basically replace swift and so i feel like this is such a powerful technology it is decentralized and somewhat uncontrollable. So I think powers to be are trying to get some control. Robinhood launches self-custody wallet. We did that last week. All right. So Brad Garlinghouse is the CEO of Ripple. He joined Ripple in 2015. Looks like he went to Harvard Business School. And he was born in Kansas. And he worked at tech companies like Yahoo, AOL, and Hightail. He has over 500 connections on LinkedIn. So this is the person, one of the two people that are directly in this lawsuit. At Ripple, I have the privilege of leading an outstanding team as we work towards realizing our vision. Well, the next slide is gonna show you 
the co-founder of Ripple Labs, Chris Larson. So Chris Larson became a co-founder and an angel investor in Ripple Labs in 2012. He co-founded Ripple Labs Inc., which developed Ripple, the software that enables the instant and direct transfer of money between two parties. So Chris Larson is known as one of the wealthiest men in crypto. These are the two men that are going at it in the courtroom to try to save Ripple from becoming a security. Let's look at the overall market, Bitcoin and Ethereum. So the market today is $961 billion. This is a slide showing the last seven days of the market. You can see it's jostled between $960 billion to $920 billion. So we have a flux of $40 billion in the last seven days. I underlined the Bitcoin dominance. It says 40%. In another slide you're going to see on Coin360, it says that the Bitcoin dominance is at 38%. And then I also wanted you guys to start taking note on the Ethereum gas fees. So it's 19 today. I've seen it as low as 8, but as high as 132. So make note of that because before you do any kind of NFT minting or transactions with Ethereum, you want to make sure you're at a low gas fee. Sometimes you may want to take take note of what time the fees are the lowest possible. It's kind of like searching for gas for your gas for your car. You want to go to the gas station that has the best quality gas, but the lowest cost. All right, so here's the one-week performance market cap block size. The colors in this mean that the dark green means that it's the price has gone up to purchase it three times. And the dark red, the darkest of the red, means the price has gone down three steps. So the middle colors, you have a light green, it's one step up, and a middle green, which is two steps up. So right now, Bitcoin is one step up for the one-week performance, and it's up 4.54% for the last seven days. So it has successfully hit over 20,000. Woo, go Bitcoin! But this says the dominance is 38.94%. So there is there is a little conflict between CoinMarketCap and Coin360. Uh, Ethereum is up 0.98% at a price of 1349 The ones that look like they have gone up three steps is Quant, QNT, and eGold. So you could actually look those up, but we'll can look them up live on the charts and kind of see where they're at right now. And then the ones that are... Mid green, you can see Binance Coin is up 6.84% for the week. Matic and Uni. All right, so we're going to use the crypto mastery.online indicators now. If you want to subscribe, just go to that URL above. It's crypto mastery.online. So here's Bitcoin USD one week performance chart using the crypto, crypto mastery indicators. We have the early reversal. It's not actually triggered in the last few weeks, and the average tree range is still in the downward direction for Bitcoin. On the trend, it looks for the last few weeks, Bitcoin has been trying to move up, but it has not successfully triggered a bell. So the key on the trend indicator comes in saying, hey, there's a key opportunity, but the bell comes in when that opportunity continues. And you can see that there was nothing that came in on the trend, on the trend line, no bell, no numbers. And so that key just was a momentarily uh, absolutely exciting moment, but it didn't really take place. Then the trend strength, it's continuing to say Bitcoin is going down. The signal line is tight. That's a tight line. So I love to see the white space between the green and the gold. And so I would call this a side, sideways signal line. So you don't want to have much expectations of anything at this point because when those colors are that close, that means it could go in either direction, up or down. But at this point, the other indicators are showing down. And the volatility index is the one of the lowest I have ever seen, 3.59. And what that means is you have oversold and overbought. This is definitely in the very bottom of bottoms of oversold zone. Now, on a positive note, we have the Raider coming in saying that the 
Bitcoin is going up for 60 minutes, four days, one day, and one week. So it is moving, but the momentum, remember, this is a one week chart. So you would have to have some aggressive momentum for these indicators to trigger that there has been a longer than short term movement in the market. So if that radar continues to stay green day after day after day, then we may have some upside to this, this low. But in an acquisition mode, it's quite exciting, but I'm personally just waiting for it to fall. All right, now we have Ethereum one week performance chart with the crypto mastery indicators. The early reversal has not triggered upward yet. The trend is looking pretty weak. It's still not moving upward and the line underlining line on the trend has gone red. The trend strength indicator is red. So if you're in another country and you're shorting the market, go, go, go. Good for you. The signal line is tight. Looks like it's definitely going to switch switch gears downward. The volatility index is higher than Bitcoin's volatility index. It is at a 10.75. The radar has it saying that it's going down for the 60 minutes, the four hours. The day average is up, but the one week is down. And then you have on the upper indicator on the left hand side, you have the average true range that is still red. So it's still saying overall it is a downward momentum. All right, so that's not always bad. If people in other countries that can short the market, they're making money. So don't fret. You know, you got to decide what where you want to live. You can short it or not. All right, so now we have a basket that was formulated with some top coins. So we have Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polygon, Cardano, Chainlink, Litecoin, Cosmos, Algorand, Harmony, Phantom, and Solana. And most of these can be found on Coinbase. So let's look at what is hot in that basket so here's the basket and i organized this by percentage change and this is a more recent intraday change so you have link up is up 5.33 percent and matic is up 4.93 percent solana is 3.98 percent bitcoin 2.3 percent and ethereum's up 2.35 percent all right so now we have a Bigger perspective, this is the crypto screener review. So the crypto screener is on trading view. And if you need to learn how to use that, let us know in the comments so we can jump in and go some deep dive into using the crypto screener. So for this slide, this is everything is organized by one hour performance and it's filtered to just show the Coinbase exchange coins, okay? And then what I did is I clicked percentage change so we could see what's been up for the last hour. So decentralized social paired with the euro went up 6.24%. Live peer paired with the USD went up 5.44%. Index cooperative paired with the USD went up 5.31%. And index cooperative with Tether went up 4.05%. Media network with the USD went up 3.68%, and Badger DAO with paired with the Tether went up 3.31%. So, and there, there's others, and you can look at this slide too. And I just want to draw your attention to the technical rating on the right hand side that will say buy or strong buy, and one says sell. So, XYO paired with Bitcoin, it's about the 10th one down. It went up 2.94% and um, that the trading view crypto screener is saying time to sell. So sell is good. Sell is take profit time, right? So now we're going to go review the indicators and we'll go with some live charts. Um, if you want to get some of these or subscribe, go to CryptoMastery.online. So now it's time for Q&A. We'll go for some live charts. And right now I have the Crypto Mastery Basket up and I was going to show you guys these slides. Well, not slides, but I wanted to show you the, uh, the actual coins. So Joe's on the line. Joe, you want to say hello to everybody? Hi, Susie. How's it going? Hi, everyone. Great. Great. And we, we actually have some great audience here today. Um, if anybody wants to get unmuted, let me know. 
it would be great to hear from you if, if you know to. Uh, a couple coins that i wanted to take a look at today is that if you can go on the ethereum on the daily um because we had an eri <clears throat> and we're coming into a new month so a lot of times coming into a new month we want to look for these clues which set the precedent um, maybe for the next couple of weeks. So on this Ethereum, if you could um, tighten the chart up a little bit. Yeah, it definitely is taking a big dip. Yeah. So yesterday we had the uh, ERI, which shows, and what's significant of that is is that the ERI actually gave its print with uh, a new green dot on the TSI. So we actually had the TSI and the ERI both print at the same time. Wow, and the trend. Well, the trend, we got the key. But there's a good chance maybe tomorrow we get the actual bell alert. And then this market here um, is... If you notice how on the Kelter band, we're at the middle moving average. So you're never going to know 100% if the market is going to keep going. But right. what we do know is, is that we're seeing the clues right here within the technology that's showing that this market may have potentially put in a short-term bottom. Now, if we were looking for like the overall trend, we really needed to break the ATR. So for this thing to get really bull, we need that to break about 15 quarter or 15.23. And that's really the level of the ATR. And if we can get a close up of that and the ATR changes, you know, th this market could, you know, go into uh, a nice short term uh, rally. And uh, remember, we did have that merge about a month ago. so. This market could be basing out, and uh, we won't know. Uh, what we what we do know is is that right now we are seeing the technology showing here that the conditions are changing, and we're seeing the ERI today show the market footprint. So if you look at the uh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I wanted to show that it went down 33% in 51 days. So it would be great to see that momentum come back. Yeah. Totally. And, and if you take a look at the TSI, right? There you go. You'll notice in there today we got the first green dot. So right now, we have five uh, chart overlays, and let's see how many checks we got to the end. Let's see what we need to happen here. Okay, so starting with the volatility index, we have that below the 20, so that's a check. The signal line has crossed. It's kind of flat line, but it's still crossed and it's green, so that's a check. Today, the TSI uh, shows its first green dot. Uh, I know because I had my alert set. So that's a check. Okay, waiting for, we're waiting for the trend. So we're waiting for the bell alert, Susie. And this is generally our last confirmation before the market takes off. And you know, if you're a newbie trader, this one is a perfect one really to start off with. I always say, like, if you can count to uh, to five, you can use the numbers. Because <laughs> so we're maybe looking at that number one numeric print after the bell alert. So the bell alert is the actual uh, signal. And once you get the bell alert, we're looking for the follow through, the numeric follow through, which shows the number one. And, and if we get this turn here, next week, Susie, we'll probably see this thing maybe at 
a three or a four. It's going to be interesting to, to see what happens. So that's one of the ones that I wanted to uh, start off with. Uh, like I'm always trying to find the best examples. Um, another one, too. Are you ready for this one? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. The uh, Cordano. In case you're new, Cardano is the name, but the ticker symbol is ADA. Uh, oh, I see. Early reversal came in up here. Yeah. Yeah. Today, too. Today. Yeah. What's good about it, guys, is look how low it is. It's um, not, it didn't hit this bar. So if, if it goes anywhere, I would say it's going to hit that guy first. So what is that, 44 cents? So it is at. Now, what's significant about today is, is that when you see this ERI print, the first thing you want to be thinking about is your TSI. So let's look at the TSI. Well, it's in a good zone. Right. It's in the oversold zone. And it's yes, moving, but. but What's more right, importantly yeah. is, is what are we waiting for? You see, because once we're waiting for the green dot, because as soon as we get that green dot, that's going to let us know that this uh, momentum, this cycle is confirming the ERI. And that's something that you can also set your alert for. So I'll do that so everybody can see. Add an alert. Crossing up. And then everything is right there. So you just say create. And that'll text me, email me, or if I have my training screen up on the computer, it'll just pop up on the screen. And the trend yeah. is we're waiting on the trend too. Right. And this trading view is so cool because once you put your notes on there, it saves it right on the chart. So, you know, when you go back and, and you go over your portfolio at the end of the day or the way when you start your trading day and you sit down, you always have these previous notes so that, you you know, you stay connected. Okay. And the signal line, we're waiting on the signal line to change. Exactly. And this is really fun because when you know what you're, you need to win, now the market is coming to you. It's, it's a totally different psychology of worrying about what you're missing. You know, you could spend the time trading worrying about what you're missing or you could spend the time on what you need to win. Yeah, so you can go here, add an alert, crossing up, create, continue. And we know, I'm going to put a check mark on the volatility because these days are so amazing. 5.72, you see this number, guys? Zero, this thick red line is a 20 and the bottom is a zero, so anything... Oh, it says the signal line is up. Oh, look, it's good. Well, what we'll do is on the if you go in there to the alert, Susie, let's take a look at that a second on the uh, signal line. Okay, you know. Generally, what you do on here is you have it uh, on crossing, and what we'll do is is we'll add in here an additional uh, upgrade and make it a lot easier, just green or red, you know. Oh, so well. we'll do an upgrade, and next week we'll go over the alerts, and we'll make it a little bit more easier where it's just green or red, okay? Okay, perfect. 
so I'll just put it on crossing. So when it does cross again, then it'll it'll trigger. So I had changed it from crossing to to up, and it is going up. It's just not crossed yet. So so I understand why it did what it did. Yeah. Well, this is exciting. It's always best to get it when it's slow. And I mean, if you look at last time, let's look at just a, a historical time when it was just that much above that Keltner band, let's say like from right here, went all the way up to this. So it went up 15% in 13 days. So it does make a move. That's the beautiful part about coins when you're actually choosing to invest in one. Make sure they move. And you could use this this average true range combo with the early reversal just to make sure you're buying something that's alive. I mean, sideways city is not a fun place to be. You want to be with something that's moving in multiple, both directions. So you can buy and sell, let it dip, and then get back in it. So even though, you know, if you were shorting the market at this point, you'd be super excited because you would have like made 61% in 56 days, right? But on the flip side, you know, if you're buying, you're like, okay, wow, it's super sale. So is there anything else you want us to look at? I was going to. Yeah, I have another uh, ERI for you, which is on LRC. All right. And is that, that yeah, loop ring. Good find. Oh, that's incredible. I just quickly want to track how much it, it went down from the last time. Let's see from here to where we are now. All right, 43% off. So it went down 43% in 51 days. So that's a, a lot of momentum. All right, I see it. So you have the early reversal here. Check. Guys, this is a one day chart. So I'd say if it's going to hit that first Keltner band, it'll probably go up to potentially 30, 30, 30 now, 37. Now, oh, yeah. Well, the middle Keltner band is always like you never know what's going to happen there. If you take a look back in here on the 12th, you can see how we failed on the last attempt. And if you look at it, you know, it was only above it for a couple of days, but it made the attack. And right now, it looks like it's going to make an attack to go challenge that level. Wow. That now, I'm going to tell you, yeah, now I'm going to tell you what I like about this one. Because each one in specific has its own um, uh, genesis, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you take a look on here and you look at the TSI, Okay. Right. In this case point, we don't have the uh, next green dot on the TSI, so it's coming out of oversold. But when you look at the, um, if you go back and you look at the trend indicator, okay, it's showing in here number one. So what's actually happening is is that we have a bell alert. And when we got the bell alert, the market failed. And that's going to happen. Not every bell alert is going to work in our favor. But the market went into a sideways consolidation period. But now we're starting to get that first number one, which is that numeric count. And you only get new numbers if the market is starting to make higher highs and starting to show that the condition could be changing. So what makes this number one so significant is that this number one is populating the same day that the ERI is. So if you go back and look at the ERI, you'll notice that the ERI gave its print and now the number one turned on. So this is a different example than what we've been going over because now we're seeing the trend indicator confirm the ERI. 
Yeah, that's beautiful. And that, you know, and, and that's what happens because right now we we got the volatility index, we got check, we got the signal line, we have a check. Okay, the TSI, we're waiting for the green dot. You got you got to put that in there. And don't forget, we have volatility on our side, too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Denville wants to get unmuted. Can we un un unmute Denville? Sure. All right. Here we go. Hello, Mr. Denville. How are you? I'm good. Hey, how you guys doing? Great, thanks. We right. will be on YouTube, so I want to let you know anything you say will be on the YouTube channel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you muted the stuff back. It's okay. I'm turning on this music so it's not in the background. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Dennis from sunny Florida. Okay. So, yeah, we were just uh, um, looking at this it's a different case point because you know, the other examples we went over and Susie, if you can make the chart, the chart a little bit more tighter. Sure. It's just, I want to show the depth behind it because, because you know, this thing has been in the downtrend since, you know, when it broke the ATR uh, right there. We, we went, okay. You want to see where Perfect. this was? Yeah, like I, we want to look over there at the beginning of the ATR. So, so if you took a, that vertical line and you put it right there at when the ATR first started to go down, right there. Okay. Okay. Now, at this point, the market is in a downtrend, and it it doesn't really matter what market that you're in. When you're in that red shadow, the overall momentum is down because the ATR, that stands for average true range. That's a representation of the true range of the market and the overall momentum. So you always want to set your trade expectation uh, higher right, when you're in the green because you're buying this market. You're not selling it. If you see it in the red, that usually means danger. Uh, and if you're going to position yourself in between there, you just have to be conscious that that's the overall trend direction, you know, um, and then you know what you need to win. And that's what successful trading is, is knowing what you need to win and understanding what, what all the clues are and, and what they're showing you. So in this case point, um, since in here, August 19th, the market has been going down, right? And uh, I generally look at like 30 days for like a market cycle. So we're we're coming in here, it's about a month and a half. So in this case point, we're waiting for the TSI. And if this thing breaks that ATR level right there, Susie, I guess it's that's 30, 75 then then you know this thing could be a move a significant move we might see this thing bottom out but uh right now everything is in the makings for short some short term covering and if you're in this you got to be quick to take profits because sometimes like I, i've been in trades like this before and they pop so hard and then if you don't get out of that trade then it's like that ends up being the high because you got these market makers that come in and you know you can just give end up giving all your profits away because you weren't fast enough. So that's happened to me too. <laughs> well, yeah, but that's what makes you super savvy and what makes you make precautionary indicators 
and alerts. So this is a one day chart. So therefore you, know, you got to make sure that when you're getting in, you're being cognizant of what's going on. Yeah. Now, so, yeah. uh, Denville, you have any, any markets that you're following? So we can pull up. Um, right now at the moment, I'm thinking about, I got to check it. Wasn't they saying that there's another coin that's supposed to be taking over the dollar? So you're um, going for a safe coin? <laughs> no, it wouldn't be a safe. It's just another coin that they're coming out with. I thought, I'm trying to see if it's, if it's Ripple that they were talking about. I got to check the notes that I was right now when I was talking to the guy. But he was like, um, right now, all of the moves that's being made behind the scenes is trying to put money into this coin and boost it up so it can actually compete with the U.S. dollar. Oh, wow. Well, so, I'll have to take a look at that. Yeah, we'll have to find out if it's a stable coin or if it's actually like a crypto. I think it's a crypto. Oh, it's another crypto? Hmm. Well, of course, crypto, but a stable crypto coin, <laughs> or you know, uh, well, we could we can go through the screener. How about that? If we want to well, we can pull going. the let's pull the ripple up, right? And take okay. a look at this. Wow, yeah, see, like, this is something man, I just want to say one thing on this, right? Is, is that there's always going to be markets that are in play, and then there's going to be other markets in there um, that the setup is going to be better. Now, I'm, I'm, granted, this market can continue to head up higher because, you know, a lot of times we can have fundamental information and it's, it's driving the market, um, you know, and we still can see the trend continue. But when you take a look at the setups that we were showing you, and a lot of the ones that we go over, this one here is one that's already been in play. So anytime that you come in here and you're looking to get into the market and you see that, that TSI up there in the blue, and it's giving, in this case point, it looks like a, a red dot. Right? That right there is showing that maybe it may have exhausted its run. Now, it's not to say that it can't go higher, but, you know, these are things you just want to be aware of before you place the trade so you don't have a high expectation that this thing should just move. Like, you may you may do two trades, and one trade may be set up perfect with the trading technology, and then you have another trade like this that's already in play. And you just have to be aware of how everything is positioned so that, if you don't get the, the instant gratification that you want, well, then you can say, hey, maybe things aren't working out um, and I may downsize position or things aren't working out, but I'm in it for the long term. It's just always good to be aware when you place the trade and to have options. And a lot of people say, like, uh, when they look at the trading that I do, well, how do you, how do you know this information? No, I, it's not so much that I know it. I'm just interpreting the tools and I'm looking for the, the path of least resistance. Like, I'm looking for something in there which is that it's a high probability that I'm going to win. It, it's not so much something that's being driven off of FOMO or off of a report. You know, because these tools, like, I'm, I'm a quantitative engineer. L what that means is that I, I study market cycles. These tools that you have in your possession, that's what they're designed to do. It's designed to show what clues when the market condition is changing. Now, there's always going to be that 1% of whether or not the market keeps going because nothing's 100%. But, like, Susie, if you take a look here, right, on here, right, on just on this chart. Yeah, where? What, what do you want to look at? But, well, if you just um, go back just a second to the chart, right? So we take a look at this chart here without doing nothing, right? And then now I want you to change the chart, okay? And okay. now let's go to the uh, XTZ. 
USD. And we, we want to go to Coinbase. It's the Tezo. Tezo. XTZ USD. There you go. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Okay. So, you know, I just want to just say that when you have an education and you have these tools, it's like night and day what you can do with that power. Night and day. You just have to oh, have an understanding of what you have and then set the right expectation. So if there was two trades that I was going to take and I was looking at that Ripple and then I was looking at this Tezo, it's like night and day which side would have the greater expectation. It's not to say that the other trade couldn't be profitable, but when you have these tools, this is the advantage that you have over your competitor. This is a zero-sum game. So like with any competitive sport, there's a loser. And if we look at why people may not be having success, what they're not doing, then we can realize the value of what we have of what we can do to have more success. And this is like an example here where everything is set up. And I, and I don't know if this is going to win 100%, but I what I do know is is that the tools, the technology, just like when you get in the car and you get in the GPS, or or my buddy, he has a Tesla, a Tesla car, and his speedometer is all electric. Like, you know, I got the old-fashioned one because I like looking at, you know, RPMs and stuff. <laughs> but he's got this new car, and his is all digital, the speedometer in there. It's technology, and we're living in a day and age that those who do not adapt to technology, because there's people out there that say, hey, you know, yeah. I don't want a computer. Where are they at today in this day and age? I mean, you know, they're still, and I'm just saying is that that's the difference. The difference is the value of what you have, the value that the tools present, and then how much fun you can have when you're utilizing the tools um, and the success that you could have. Can I make a point on this chart to just draw your guys' attention to this? Is that I wanted to see, you know, past performance on Tezos. When the key came in, what happened? And and here's what happened. So Tezos was in the low oversold zone. The signal line was already green. The TSI triggered. The the key triggered at the same time. The early reversal didn't trigger. But even with the early reversal not triggering, look at this. Let's just see like how much it went from this point all the way up to about right there it went up 18 percent in three days and then went back down so i do want to iterate again or, or just repeat what joe said is like you get in and you get out if you're swing trading to make a profit because if you didn't and, and please please take notice that this is beyond the top of that counter band and even the average tree range is still downward so you need to know you're still at risk of a stumble like, you know, people are, you go up a steep hill, there's a chance you're going to roll back down. <laughs> and so imagine like this average tree range is saying, okay, you're, you're, you're rock climbing up a, a steep hill. You may fall back, but you'll get back up again. Right. And that's kind of what's happening, but this goes up. So you got to swing fast and, and you got to get out, be very cognizant of these levels right here. This is the most important part is like, those those the top countner so when it gets up here jump baby jump that's what i gotta say jump you know if you if you don't have the stamina or if you don't care about long-term things and and you know it's like technical traders don't really get involved in the fundamentals they call them funny mentals so even though i gave you a report on ripple it really shouldn't make you buy that on a responsible level because like joe just showed you that the funny mentals of ripple if you were to buy now based on that you'd be buying too high because it's about to go south again so i hope that makes sense to you guys 
Yeah, it made a lot of sense. But I got another question, though. That same thing you were talking about, isn't that the same thing that Joe was talking about earlier with the red dot? That you had four of them line up, but the fifth one didn't line up. And just like just there, you're saying that all of the other ones are lined up, but that one right there still didn't give you the early reversal and show you that it's about to change. And that's why you might not want to go all in on it. Is that the same thing you guys are saying? Exactly. Yeah. And, and what he usually, Joe, you want to tell him how you say you you slowly go in on each indicator? Like, yeah, scale in. Like, scale in, scale out. Like I, You never go 100%. Like ideally is, I, I always say 25, 25, 25, 25, right? Um, you know, you go according to your risk tolerance. But the whole idea behind the 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 program is to have these additional confirmations because the market is elusive right you, you know what the market's like the market is like trying to catch a butterfly in a fisherman's net <laughs> right it's elusive <laughs> right it, it's very elusive right so you know um me, as, as a quantitative engineer, I'm looking at the market's footprint. So these different uh, uh, chart overlays or, or indicators are the best tools that I found that show the best clues. So the only thing we need to do is learn the clues. And the, from learning the clues, we'll learn the program and we'll meet up with success. Meaning is that like if you follow that green dot and then the trade progression starts to take place and we do get a number one, you'll start to see that success manifest right there in front of you. And that's the whole thing is that once you're able to have one success, that's called a building block. And then once you got the building block, there's no stopping you. There is no, once you know the way to grandmom's house, there, I can drop you off anywhere in the world and you'll still find your way back to grandma's because you've been there before. You've done it. And this really, when it comes down to this, it really takes someone else that has a great technology, a, a great team, and for them to lead you and kind of hold your hand so that you can obtain that success and, and acclimate yourself with it. And that's what we're doing here each week when we get together and we're, we're going over different chart examples. It's, it's a way in here where we can discuss what's happening in here and then look to uh, position ourselves so that we can win with the tools. And, um, you know, we got a, a lot of great success stories. I mean, right now, Anybody that does crypto, we're dealing with the bias of the war. So there's always going to be that factor right now of the war. And, and I believe that's why everything is down right now. Right. So I think that if there was any type of peace or, cease, or a ceasefire, I think that, that we would see something dramatic happen, like rally. But uh, right now, until we maybe pass this, um, right now, the, the, the market is in a trading range. And the best thing that we can do is trade the trading rage and uh, get better at the clues, you know, get better at the clues, get better at, at being able to identify um, these turning points and trade the range. And, and you don't have to win 100% of all your trades um, to be a successful trader. Um, you know, a lot of this business is just being able to position yourself and be in the market. Okay. Let me see if I can find just maybe another something else hot here, Susie, on my other screen. You want me to give you one? Sure, if you got one. Well, I don't know if it's hot, but you can check out um API 3. Sure, put that one in, Susie. Oh, that's just right flat, but it's all green though. But it's in the oh. the TMI is oversold, so I well, see your money bag. 
Hey, here's the thing right here. <laughs> here's the thing with this one. All right. All right. Being that that the first thing I look at in here is really the vol. I go and look at the volatility index. Their volatility index does have more room to go up. It's just starting to come out. All right. So there's always going to be um, different case points to to the clues that we get. So for myself, I always look at the volatility index, and to me, there's room. It's, this isn't a case point where we're up at the green. This is a case point where there is room to go. So right here, this is saying that there's room. <laughs> Very cool. Okay, so there's my analysis on the volatility index. Okay. All right. And um so right now there's room to go there. The signal line is still trending, right? So there's room. Now, when we when it comes to the case of the TSI, right? The TSI right now is up in the blue, but it could stay in the blue because the other chart overlays are still strong. So unless you have like a red dot, sometimes you have to give it a little bit of time. Uh, on a scale from 1 to 10, is this, a, is this a 10? No, it's not a 10, but like I mentioned before, it doesn't have to be a 10 to make money, right? This, to me, on a scale from 1 to 10, this is probably maybe, uh, maybe to me it would be a, a 6. And the reason why it would be a 6 would be because of the TSI. You know, like my big thing would be is that if the TSI gave a red dot, it, you, you, it may pull back right, right from that point. But as long as that TSI doesn't show red, go with it. You know? Because what can happen is, is that we can go up on the next leg and test that 18. You see where that ATR is coming in at? Oh, you want me to? Um... Yeah, yeah, right there at that ATR. That would be your level right there. You need to close yeah. above that 19 to change the trend. So if you're looking for a, a significant move in this, you need to close above that level. Yeah, that's, that's what that's, that's for. Gonna change. Well, that's what the top of the ATR is for to tell you like where the well, top range is. The ATR is showing when the cycle changes. So even though we're in a downtrend, the cycle is starting to show changes of a potential bottom. But it's not until we actually break the ATR and it turns green can we can we officially say that the trend has changed. So, like for example, if you scroll back, Susie, when it like it looks like maybe July, when it first broke right there, you see how when the cycle when it was going down before, and then when it broke the ATR, the cycle changed. It stopped putting in the uh -huh. lower lows. Okay, let me let me just put an arrow so they can see that. So basically, guys, right here. So the moment it went, so this, the ATR, right there is the pivotal point where it changed, which yeah, is close it, to where it is. So basically, I would say the first stop would probably be one, one point dollar seventy eight. See, the way this works is, is there are waves, right? You got the big wave, and then you have the small wave. This is the bigger wave, right? This is the kind. <laughs> Big kahuna. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're back to so basically. Well, wow. Look at we're. It's like we went back in time to December 2021. Wow. So you know what would make this cherry to me, and it could still happen. Just to let you know, if that ERI came in, this would to me would be a ten. So I would set your alert for that ERI, 
because if the ERI triggers, I mean, like, it, it would have everything, all, everything, all the makings in there to, like, all the power it would need to break that and change the cycle again. But where where would you put the alert? Well, the alert when you get the next ATR. The AT, I mean, not the ATR, the next um, ERI. The ERI is the vertical green line. So, so if we got a, a vertical green line with this. Oh, so when the box turns from red to green, that's what you mean. Okay. Yes. But you're trying to teach us how to catch it before the box changes, right? Well, I want you to, if you have the alert on the bar that that ERI prints, which is the green vertical, you'll, you'll get that signal on that bar. And that's the best positioning you can have, which is that bar. Because if you get in on that bar, the next bar might be straight up. Like, like for example, like Susie, I found one. Um, oh, uh, when you're done, I don't mean to change, but um, I know we're running out oh, of time. I just wanted to show it. Uh, oh, Ed? yeah, we are. Uh, oh, no, do you it. want to, you no, want to make it. sure Dan yeah. how to set the alarm? You just add an alert. And then no, no, I got that part. I was just asking him where to put it. That's why I was asking. Okay. All right. What's the other yeah. one, Joe? Yeah. Well, what I wanted to show, and this one here is A A V E B T C. That's gonna be my next pick. Um. <laughs> Very cool. Great minds think alike. <laughs> Look. Okay. Right there yeah. on the ERI, right? And that's one of the first things, like, when I'm organizing the portfolio and I look at, because that, that ERI is significant, as soon as I see the ERI, now I want to see what the TSI is doing. So let's, let's take a look at the TSI, Susie, and see if we got a green dot. We do. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, and look at the signal line, Cherry. Oh, uh, oh, come on. I hope this momentum continues on. This is exciting. Remember, guys, we're on a one-day chart here. Everything, stars align. Right, I got to get off this webinar so I can do some trading. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, ding dong. Payday is coming. Get it in, get it out, you know. It's Tuesday, so we'll have pizza party on Friday if all still goes, right? <laughs> <laughs> Remember, like, when you were a kid, oh, we'll have a popcorn party if everybody gets in. <laughs> this is beautiful. Denver, what do you Oops. think? Are you excited? Am I excited? Are you serious? Come on. <laughs> Like that's a um, really this is like um, a perfect way really to uh, I, I, like really to end because it's a it's a great setup and like I said you never know a hundred percent of where the market is going to go but out of all the setups that we looked at um, this one in particular was a fresh ERI it's also a fresh signal line and the volatility index is still in the twenty now we don't have the green dot so Susie you got to um, put in there on the TSI waiting for the green dot on the TSI, and that that would confirm, and waiting for the bell alert. So there's two things that you are waiting for, and there's three things that have have already um, set the conditions bullish to favor the upside conditions. So this is like really the um, something that you can watch the next couple of days. And um, and we'll see what happens. And next week we'll look at this. But this is a great one. You know, there's always going to be better ones when you come right into the beginning of the month or right at the end of the month, just in my opinion. Because once the trend moves, then it's always difficult trying to enter in the market in the middle of the month. Unless the market's hot, you know. Um, But um, if that was on your list, man, you know that's great because you know uh, you got some um, some winners, some good winners in your basket. And in my opinion, great setup. 
Uh, Come on, man. You put it up on that thing, CZ. <laughs> I'm going to run my whole basket through each one of your indicators. Trust me. <laughs> Very cool. Oh, I'll be Ah, let's just delete that one. Because I just had Ave, but now you're going to let me go do Ave BTC. I just learned something new. Like, that's a different one. Uh, awesome. Yeah, the pairs. All right. Well, it's 102. It's been great being with you guys today. I think we we went over some good coins. So to review, we had Av. Uh, we also went over Tezos. Is that right? Yeah. Was it Tezo? I feel like O oh, X. Excuse me. And what are the other ones that we looked at? So, yep, there we go. The AP3. API3. API3. So, somebody new may be upset, like they get it and they buy it and then psh, it goes down, but got some stamina, maybe you could hang tight with API3 a little bit longer. I'll just wait for the right uh, time. So, okay, Joe, out of all three of those, and you also looked at Cardano, we looked at ADA. Which one would you go in first, Joe, out of all four of those? Oh, wow. That's, uh, I would probably say in there that uh, the one, I personally like the AA, the AVA, AAVBTC. I would say it's a, probably between a AVA and that Cardano is probably tied. Those are two really good setups. Okay. Don't so forget about that. Ripple. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, <laughs> you know, um, that's probably like the, the third one. Uh, it's just on the Ripple, it, it doesn't have, I think it's going to be something in there. If that moves, it's more driven by fundamental because see how right, how it is right now. If you get that next green dot on the, the TSI, okay, that's your confirmation. I, I will tell you that. Like, what do you need to win? I'm going to tell you what you need to win. You need the green dot on that TSI, right? And you need the, the trend indicator to give you a new number one because that would confirm a new a new cycle. And now you're on your way. Okay, I got it on that. Because it was the XRP I was talking about that's supposed to be the new money. So even if you're not buying that, keep your eye on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, look, I, I, you know, a lot of these coins and stuff, you know, they have the fundamental information. They got the structures in place. It can do it. It can definitely do it. There's a lot of great success stories. Long term, you could see, I mean, even though I, I like shrinking Ripple up because I've had Ripple since 2018. So I'm a hodler. <laughs> so if you go long term, you just got to have some stamina with this one. But it went down 76%. Okay. So How high was it? I th I bought it at a high. So $1.96, I think I got it at can't remember 59 cents or a dollar 29 so i am down but i'm i'm in it because no. of the technology the infrastructure that's not because that bad, no no but it's okay but I'm, I'm in it because i i i know that the project and the technology will take over the global swift it'll just replace swift and the cost EOS was one of those that seemed to have some fundamentals that were similar to Ripple, if I recall correctly. But EOS hasn't done anything, but, and I could be wrong about that, but so don't mark my word on that. But Ripple, Ripple definitely made a deep impact to me in 2018 when I did deep research on them. And I knew that they were going to technologically just take over with is technology. It, is Engine still in play? Indian coin, yeah. That used to make some moves back. Isn't it, Jay? 
And yeah, E is it E? I just spell it. It'll. No, I think it's E N J. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. You there we go, yeah, Andre. You know what we'll do, right. Susie, is that next week we'll put this on the we can we can put these on the list like so that when you go over the news we can have them and then we can have more time to go over everything. Yeah, so we'll we go, but um just so something. you know, engine engine's on for the day. Look, the early reversal's on engine, the key is on engine, and the TSI is on engine. And I just pulled that out my head, yo. Get the hell out of here. Yeah. Wow. 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 And the signal line has triggered. So another great find. I'm glad you did this. Okay. I really need to go so I can start trading. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, I'll, I'll stop. I'll stop. I'm sorry. I'll stop. Yeah, great call. <laughs> great call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good fine, and you know what's beautiful about engine it 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 hasn't hit the f second uh Keltner band, so maybe it'll go from where it is to forty seven cents. But well, it, this uh, was definitely fun. I I tell you guys that this was fun. <laughs> All right, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thanks for asking questions and participating. Very cool. Yeah, that was <laughs> awesome. All right, KS okay. said. He wants us to go to cryptobubbles.com. Okay, and Robin was saying, why a a BTC is better than IRC USD printed one? My one day LRC printed a green dot on TSI. Okay, I guess we'll just quickly look at LRC. Joe, if you need to go, let's just quickly do this for this gentleman. So Rob, are you able to talk really quick? Or um oops. Sorry guys. So why what is this glass node everywhere? Must be a new exchange that just popped up. It's a glass okay. node. Yeah, so here's your LRC. So What so Rob was asking you a question. Oh, and KS said Hero USDT has been running for the last two days, pulling back now on Qcoin. We need to watch if trend resumes. And Rob says the one day LRC printed a green on the TSI. All right. So, but if we don't see the green dot on the TSI. But uh, Joe, Joe Rob is saying that his his uh, LRC printed printed a green dot, but maybe he's on a different time. Well, make frame. sure. Well, look, make sure you're on a daily, right? Um, uh, we don't have right now on the right now on the daily. You know, uh, maybe it was right at that point, and it showed it and it gave it back. But right now, this is the the cloud. Um, so uh, let's just uh, let things develop and see by the end of the day if it gives a completion. Because, you know, remember, this is a daily chart. So during the day, it may show it and then not show it and then show it. And then when we get the final print of the bar, I believe it's like at 5 o'clock, it'll make the confirmation of whether or not it's a green. So I would say take a look at this and check back in a few hours. And we'll, we'll take a look at the final print of the bar to find out if, you know, uh, we get that actual green print. All right. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, All right. guys. Awesome. Great having you Thank here you. today. We'll see you next week. Thanks, Joe. Thank Have you. Good day. You too. Thanks, guys. Bye.